Good morning, everyone, and congratulations on 17th of May, the Norwegian Constitution Day. Gratulerer med dagen. Today, I would like to tell you about one person who lived in the Middle Ages and who even was not a Norwegian, he was an Icelander, but his life and especially his writings have played a very important role for Norwegian national historical self-understanding. His name was Snorri Sturluson. He was born in 1179 and he died or was killed in 1241. Actually, he was killed by the order of the Norwegian king. Okay, how come an Icelander who was killed according to the order of the Norwegian king, how, how can he be relevant or important for the celebration of the 17th of May today? Wait and see. Snorri Sturluson was an Icelandic historian poet and politician. He was elected twice as a law speaker at the Icelandic parliament, the all thing. Now, law speaker is not really a modern term, term, so I don't know whether you are familiar with it. Now, roughly it corresponds, corresponds to a modern speaker at a modern parliament. Uh, yeah, Snorri was also a writer. He was the author of the so-called Prose Edda, or Younger Edda, which is both an Ars Poetica, that is a teaching book about how to write good poetry, and a treatise on Norse mythology. Snorri was also the author of the Heimskringla, a history of the Norwegian kings, that begins with legendary material and moves through to early medieval Scandinavian history. As a historian and mythographer, Snorri is remarkable for proposing the hypothesis that mythological gods begin as human war leaders and kings whose funeral sites develop cults. As people call upon the dead war leader as they go to battle, or the dead king, as they face tribal hardship, they begin to venerate the figure. Eventually, the king or warrior is remembered only as a god. He also proposed that as tribes defeat others, they explain their victory by proposing that their own gods were in battle with the gods of the others. Let's concentrate on Heimskringla, one of the most famous writings of Snorri Sturluson. Heimskringla is a collection of sagas about the Norwegian kings. Yeah, what is a saga? Saga means basically a tale or a story. So Heimskringla is not an individual, a single saga. It is a collection of sagas. It was written in Old Norse, which was the common language in Norway and in Iceland in the Middle Ages, so that the term Old Norse covers both Old Norwegian and Old Icelandic. Yeah. So Heimskringla was written in Iceland, not Norway, around 1230 by the poet and historian Snorri Sturluson. Now, by the way, the text in the manuscript does not have a name. The name Heimskringla was actually first used in the 17th century, derived from the first two words of one of the manuscripts, Kringla Heimsins, the circle or the orb of the world. Heimskringla begins with the saga of the legendary dynasty of the Ynglings, a mythological legendary Swedish dynasty. 
followed by accounts of historical Norwegian rulers, from Harald Fairhair of the 9th century, up to the death of the pretender Øystein Møyla in 1177. The first saga in Heimskringla, Ynglinga saga, tells the mythological prehistory of the Norwegian royal dynasty, tracing Odin, described here as a mortal man, not as a god, and his followers from the east, from Asaland and Asgard, its chief city, to their settlement in Scandinavia. The subsequent sagas are with few exceptions devoted to individual rulers, starting with Halvdan the Black and ending with Magnus Erlingsson. The sagas narrate the contests of the kings, the establishment of the Kingdom of Norway, Viking expeditions to various European countries, straying as far afield as Palestine, in the saga of King Sigurd the Crusader. The stories are told with a life and freshness, giving a picture of human life in all its reality. The main part of Heimskringla is Saga of Olav Haraldsson. His 15-year-long reign takes up about one-third of the entire work. The saga of Harald Hardrada, who was a half-brother of Olaf Haraldsson, narrates his expedition to the east, his brilliant exploits in Constantinople, Syria, Sicily, his scaldic accomplishments, and his battles in England against Harold Godwinson, the son of Earl Godwin, where he fell at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066, only a few days before Harold himself fell at the Battle of Hastings. This saga is a splendid epic in prose, and is also of particular relevance to the history of England. But f first of all, Heimskringla is, of course, very relevant to the history of Norway. It's the Norwegian rulers, the Norwegian kings, that are in focus of the story all the time. How reliable as a historical source is Heimskringla? Well, In our days, we do distinguish between literature and history. This distinction was not that clear in the Middle Ages. Well, the first part of the Heimskringla is rooted in Norse mythology. As the narrative advances, Fable and fact all curiously intermingle, intermingle and it terminates in a factual history. The value of Heimskringla as a historical source has been estimated in different ways during recent times. The historians of mid-19th century put great trust in the factual truth of Snorri's narrative as well as other Old Norse sagas. In the early 20th century, this trust was largely abandoned with the advent of saga criticism, pioneered by scholars as Kurt and Lauritz Weibull. These historians pointed out that Snorri's work had been written several centuries after most of the events it describes. In Norway, the historian Edvard Bull famously proclaimed that we have to give up all illusions that Snorri's mighty epic bears any deeper resemblance to what actually happened in the time it describes. 
A school of historians has come to believe that the motives Snorri and the other saga writers give to their characters owe more to conditions in the 13th century, that is, the times when Snorri and those other authors lived, than in earlier times, times these authors are describing. Heimskringla has, however, continued to be used as a historical source, though with more caution. It is not common to believe in the detailed accuracy of the historical narrative, and historians tend to see little to no historical truth behind the first few sagas. However, they are still seen by many as a valuable source of knowledge about the society and politics of medieval Norway. The factual content of the work tends to be deemed more credible where it discusses more recent times, as the distance in time between the events described and the composition of the saga was shorter, allowing traditions to be retained in a largely accurate form, and because in the 12th century the first contemporary writer, written sources begin to emerge in Norway. Okay. And after having heard this, I expect you all to want to listen to what Snorri actually has written in Heimskringla. So first of all, there is a short excerpt from the very first saga of Heimskringla, the legendary Ynglinga saga, in the original language, Old Norse. Ynglinga saha, fyrsti kapituli, her seher frå landaskipan. Kringla heimsins, su er man folket byggvir, er mjög vahskarin. Ganga hofstor or utsjanum in i jordina. Er that kunicht ad havgänger fra Norwa sundum och allt ut till Jorsala lands. Av havno gänger langer havspotten till landnorders er heiter svarta hav. Tha skiller heims thridjungarna. Heiter förr åstan Asia en förr västan kalla sommer Europa en sommer Enea. En northern at Swarta Havi, Genger Swithioth in Mikla, Eda in Kalda. Swithioth in a Miklu, Kala Sumir men Eihi Mini en Serkland it Mikla, Sumir Jevna Heni with Blaland it Mikla. In Nördrich Luther Swithiother, Ligger Obigder of frosty og kulda. Svo sem in sydrich lutter blålands er auður av solarbruna. I Svíþjóð eru stór heruð morg. Þar eru og margs konar þjóðir og marhar tungur. Þar eru rissar og þar eru dverhar. Þar eru blámenn og þar eru margs konar underlíkar þjóðir. Þar eru og dýr og drekkar fúrðulíka stórir. Ór norðri frá fjólum þeim er fyrir útan eru byggð alla, fellur á um Svíþjóð. Sú er að reytu heitir Tannais. Hon var fórðum kóluð Tannakvísil eða Wannakvísil. Hon kommer til sjávar inn í Svartahav. Í Wannakvíslum var þá kallat Wannaland eða Wannaheimur. Sú á skiller heimstriðjungana. Heitir fyrir ástan Asia en fyrir vestan Európa. Þá 